We've been farming on the southwest slopes here for 30 years. Our property varies greatly from top to bottom. We've probably got a, a range of 150 metres fall and a distance of probably three kilometres. Working with a local soil scientist and agronomist helped us understand the variation of soils we have across our property. For the last 30 years or so, I've been working as a soil scientist and geomorphologist for various universities and the New South Wales State Government. Soils vary across the landscape according to the geology, climate and topography. To help you understand that variation, there are lots of soil information resources available to you, including soil landscape reports and maps. There's also a new exciting resource called eSpay, which is an internet available resource that you can get access to via your computer or a tablet like this one. eSpade and Soil Landscape Reports describe soils and landforms in a particular area. The property we are on today is on the Kutamundra Sheet and has been mapped as the Crowther Soil Landscape. This soil landscape is primarily on granodiorite, which produces a very sandy, gritty soil within a clay matrix. Soil Landscape Reports and eSpade are valuable tools for soil information but there's no substitute for looking at the soils up close. We're going to do that now with local soils expert Ian Packer. One of the most rewarding parts of uh, working with soils has been working with farmers, looking at soil pits and describing the soils with them and showing them how they manage their soils. The first thing we do when we're describing a soil pit is we clean off the face. So we're looking at the soil that hasn't been disturbed and to, to look at first of all the layers that we've got and the different colours and the different textures. From this site, the first thing we see is a very shallow topsoil, a subsurface soil, which is only about 30 centimetres deep, and all the old rotten parent material. That rock was sitting out there at depth, and it's broken down into, an, into a very coarse, textured clay soil at depth. The next bit we do um, in describing a soil is we describe the pH of a soil. pH is how acid or how alkaline the soil is. What we do is we place a, a green indicator solution on the face of the wall and we, then we sprinkle it with this white barium powder. And from there it develops a colour. And if you can see the colours through there, and then we just go down the profile. And if we have a closer look at this, the pH of the surface is about six and it goes down to pH of seven, seven down below. So this soil is very good as far as pH. And so it's not acid, it's what they call a neutral soil. The next description we do is the soil structure. And by, by soil structure, it's we just dig it away and look at the soil and see how it crumbles or, or forms into, into little blocks. And this one at the surface is what they call a massive soil. It has no structure in it at all. And when we go to the deeper layer where there's a little bit more clay, the soil's got a little bit more structure and it'll tell us that there'll be a bit more drainage for water and for, for root growth. It's a pretty good soil. And the final thing we look for is what the plants are telling us and where the, where the roots are growing in the soil, which is a really good indicator of how good the soil is and where there's water and where there's chemicals that might stop it from, from growing. Whether there's any toxic elements such as acid soil or, or whether it's too much salt. In the soil you can see that the roots have gone quite, quite deep in the soil to over a metre. So it's telling us that the, the, the plants are having no trouble growing in this soil. What Ian's just given to me is a, a small bit of the subsoil and I'm doing what's known as a field texture on it which is where we wet the soil down, create a little ball and then a ribbon. The longer the ribbon, the more clay there is in the soil. If it's a fairly short ribbon before it breaks, then it might have a lot more sand in it. Actually, this has got a bit of both. It's, uh, as you can see, it's a very clay soil. However, I can also feel a lot of the grittiness. It's got a very coarse sand in amongst it as well. This one is probably, oh, I guess, a coarse sandy clay loam. From all the descriptions that we've done on this soil, we can now call it a brown tennis soil. And what that means from a practical point of view is it's a well-drained soil. It has low water hold capacity, so it needs a lot of rain to keep the moisture up to the plants. And it's more suited for mixed farming rather than straight cropping. 
The other important aspect of this soil and the slope that it's on is the high risk for erosion. And if we're going to crop this country, we have to go to a no-till stubble retention system so we keep the erosion to a minimum. Okay, now we've described the soil on top of the hill. What we're going to do is uh, move down to the mid-slope and have a look at the soil down there. The first thing we notice is that the topsoil is deeper and the subsurface soil, or the second layer, is, is deeper also and there's no rocks. There's all subsoil and no rocks at depth. The other thing we're noticing is the pH. The pH in this soil is a little bit uh, acid at the surface but it's a good pH right through, a neutral pH. So it's good for, for growing crops and pastures. And there's a little bit of um, indication that there's some water logging at depth. Uh, the description of this so soil would be called a yellow chromosome. An interesting feature of, these, of this soil type is that we have these um, iron and manganese nodules. Now that's indicating to us we have a, a, a rising and falling water table, even though we're in a, in a, a well-drained landscape, the water does come up and form these iron and manganese oxides. And the recommended management for this soil is um, mainly for cropping in, in this mid-slope. It's a better soil type. It has a lower slope, but it's still very erodible and it still needs to have no-till and stubble retention. And the other aspect of keeping our stubble is to improve the soil organic matter. So we've seen the soils on the crest of the hill and also in the mid-slope location. We're now going to go down to the lowest part of the slope. And now we're in the bottom of the landscape we've been describing today. The first thing we look at is the colour, and we can see it's obviously much yellower than the other two soils we've been looking at. The next major difference is the subsurface soil. It's uh, what we call bleached, and all the nutrients have been leached out of it. And then we move into a sodic subsoil, which is dense, hard, and um, another terminology we call mottle. That means it's yellow and grey, and very poorly drained. The acidity, or the pH, we have an acid topsoil, probably caused by land management, going to a more alkaline, alkaline soil with depth. Management implications of this soil are, it's a, probably a marginal cropping soil, probably better suited to pastures. The main reason for that is because it waterlogs so much, it's sodic, that means it's very hard for the roots to grow through, and maybe it's probably better to take it back to a pasture and still keep it as pasture. So whether you use your own spade or his spade, you can enjoy learning all about your soils. And with this extra knowledge, you'll be able to look after this precious resource. <laughs>